it's just a lot of crazy, crazy fibs and lies. You know, it's just a situation where, you know, we won 29 games last year. And for us as a basketball organization, we want to get better. If Cuz is our best player, we know that. We want him committed and dedicated to being in Sacramento and playing playing and leading us to the first playoffs in Sacramento in six, seven, eight, nine years. You are not interested in trading to Marcus Cousins. Yeah, my interest right now is commitment, trust, and building a team that's excited about being in Sacramento, excited and committed to being a good basketball team and, and, and representing the city of Sacramento. All right, George, I'll give this to you first. How much longer <laughs> will Cousins be with the Kings? Man, look, this is tough because I really like George Carl. Yeah. He was one of our colleagues here. But he didn't answer that second uh, question. He did, he did the sidestep yeah. right there. He gave us the matrix. Yeah. He, kind he, of like he, was at, he was like Neo. The bullets yeah. were coming. He was like, whoa. He looked like he was at yeah. a golf outing. Yeah. He should have been on Dancing with the Stars because yeah, he yeah. was just soft yeah. toe. Yeah. Now, the Sacramento Kings are one of the most dysfunctional franchises, not only in the NBA, but in all of sports right yeah. now. You've got an owner who has done and said a lot of crazy things, okay? He said that he'd be okay with his team playing four on five on defense so they can get out on the break earlier. I mean, that's just nonsense right there. And here's the thing. He loves DeMarcus Cousins. Okay, I get it. The owner and the, and the star player should get along really well. So then why did he fire the coach in Mike Malone that got along with DeMarcus Cousins when they were actually playing pretty well under Mike Malone? And then he brings in George Carl, who at the time, if we recall, there were a lot of reports like, ooh, we don't know if that's going to work. You know, both sides are kind of like, eee, they, they, they don't fit with, with what each other wants to do. And then, of course, we have the actual friction between the two. None of this should be a surprise, okay? I covered a game of theirs. They were in Miami, and they were down 13, 14 points in the fourth quarter, and they lost the game. I went into the locker room with our with our own Tom Haberstrow, and one of the beat writers for Sacramento asked DeMarcus, hey, so, you know, what happened there at the end of the game? You guys blew the lead, blah, blah, blah. And DeMarcus, and I'm paraphrasing, said something to the effect of, that the offense makes him more predictable. Mm -hmm. That we're all, we're, he, he, he started by saying that, look, we're all working, it's only been a couple of weeks, you know, we'll, we'll try to get it together, but then he went, into, went on to say that it makes him more predictable, easier to defend at times. Mm -hmm. And right there, I was like, oh, I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks. I and mean, you play basketball, okay? Like, you're the athlete here. Yeah. You know, you say that, like, that, that raises an eyebrow. It definitely does. No, absolutely. And I'll tell you this as an athlete. If you have even an inkling of an idea that your coach doesn't want you there, which, by the way, George Carl answered that second question, sounds like Pretty clearly. he's not so sure. Yeah. Your level of investment, your level of trust is not going to be anywhere it needs to be to be the leader of that team. So, in my opinion, something's got to happen. Someone's got to go. And DeMarcus Cousins, I mean, I know there's talks about him going to the Lakers. That would be a great place for him because let's mm -hmm. be real. He needs a little attitude adjustment. He needs a pro, a veteran, like maybe a Kobe, Kobe Bryant sure. that can bring him along, that can show him how it's done, that will, when he starts to pout, he will say, be quiet, sit down, <laughs> I'm running this, you're not going to lose games for us, and we're moving along. So, yes, I think that relationship from the cryptic tweet we saw. From Snake from in the grass. <laughs> Snake in the grass. Do we have the tweet? Can we put that thing up on the yeah, screen? That Cousins. was fantastic. That was good. He, it, was, it, was real, it was well done on his part, but yes. he's letting us know that he is not comfortable. He, he feels like there are some people that don't have his back, yeah. and he is he's on the lookout for sure. This is what I don't understand. You have the owner who loves the player and the coach saying, this guy, he's our leading scorer, but you know I only want people that want to be here. So then Cousins puts that tweet out which he didn't type any words cool you telling me that these two guys can't get on the phone and talk to one another you're airing this out here the only person that i think looks bad in this is george carl no see i think the owner looks bad the owner knew that george carl and demarcus were going to be a bad fit from the get-go everybody yeah. on god's green earth was Completely. telling him that yeah. but for george carl to not come out and go listen I, we're putting the best team on the floor that's available and whatever pieces i get i'm going to coach them up and make this the best team that's available to me at least in saying that, he's throwing a little bit of padding between him and DeMarcus. You know what I mean? Just a little bit out there. But for him to just dance around that question and do the hey, hey. <laughs> Well, and let's be honest. DeMarcus has shown some emotional immaturity. So where a, a player that had a little more may be able to maybe pick up the phone and call coach and say, well, DeMarcus has a way right. of, uh, you know, really helping people understand how he feels. And it's not always the best way. He's a young star. I think he'll 
he'll grow. I think he'll mature. But at this point, it's a relationship that it is, at this point in DeMarcus' career, I don't think can be mended. With so the it's cap not space worth the trouble, is you. what you're saying. No. Yeah. Somebody's got to go. She, she's right. Yeah. China's right. Somebody's got to go. Now, here's the thing. Are you going to pay another coach to go away? And with the, cap space, that they, with the cap space that they have, you can bring in that mature guy that's going to help. Who's going to want to play in Sacramento? Well, that's knowing that there's a toxic situation. <laughs> Why you got to throw right. that into the mix? And then right. what are they no, going to no, no. do? I, right, it's about the toxic situation more than anything else. Right. What are they going to do about that relationship between George Carl and Demarcus Cousins? Well, what's, Nothing. What's easier to get? Is it easier to get someone with the talents that Demarcus Cousins has, or a coach? Because in my opinion, George Carl's the easier replaced one. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sure. get a guy like DeMarcus Cousins where you can just pick him out whenever you want to. George Carl at his age, wh where am I going to get an NBA coach? Well, according to the Cleveland Cavaliers, <laughs> we can pick one up. Anyway. Let's just go to Walmart. Where's yeah. Target? Where, yeah, but if you, do, go over there. if you do make a coaching change, I still think you need that vet to come Absolutely. in with For sure. Absolutely. to really For sure. help Absolutely. DeMarcus. And, I mean, because we don't want to be doing this his entire career. Yeah, he, he needs an alpha dog. Okay, and, I, and we discussed this dirt before the show. Like I, I referenced Rasheed Wallace. Rasheed mm -hmm. Wallace um, was was a guy when he was in Portland. They you know he, they relied upon him in a lot of ways. And then when he went to Detroit, and he had Chauncey Billups, and he had Rip Hamilton, and Ben Wallace, and that group, and Larry Brown. And then they got him to play as well as he's ever played in a team setting. And I think maybe that's what Demarcus needs is whether it's a coach or another player or both that fits what works for him and brings the best out of him. I think that's what's necessary. And he is that good. He is that good yeah. to make the necessary changes around him to allow him to have consistency and be the star that he is. He's worth it to That's me. why George Carl messed up because he could have put himself in a position to go, I'm working with what I have and I'm going to mm -hmm. make this really good. And by not doing that, he put himself on the You put a wedge in between yeah. the guy who's scoring the yeah. most points but, for you. But you know what? If he's on the chopping block and he's going to get paid $4 million a year for the next couple of years not to work, he yeah, might have done that on purpose. Yeah. That's okay. So what do we think? Does Cousins last of the year does he make it through the season oh yeah yeah oh yeah so you think they're firing george carl if anybody's going to go it's going to be george carl again what's the easier replaceable part of this story george carl's the one that's replaceable this guy who put up the most points for your team you're not gonna not you're gonna start all over you're going to, all right, George, you're right. I love this dude who's doing everything for our team, and it's been fantastic, and we're going to build something around him. But you're right. Take him out. But maybe it is best it. for everyone that he goes somewhere else. Yeah. Better for DeMarcus, better for the franchise. We, I, I just better for George Carl. Yeah. Well, I'm saying we've yeah. seen guys go to another spot and be able to flourish, yeah. and then the other team, at times, maybe they, they could find a way to flourish themselves, too. Maybe it's time for a split. And I'm not saying it's DeMarcus's fault. I'm just saying it may be in his best interest to go somewhere else. Yeah, and some of those trade rumors... Julius Randle, I mean, he's going to be a different type of player in, in emotional maturity, leadership-wise, all of that, because he's right. young, more moldable than, than DeMarcus Cousins. Right, and you would get the number two pick, too. Right. You could take Jalil Oka for, you right. could start there with another center. I mean, you know, I, I think that there are ways around that, potentially, for both teams for it to work. Well, if he were to be traded, he'd be the sixth player in NBA history to average at least 24 points and 12 rebounds per game and play for a different team the next season. So, Jameis Winston, meanwhile, is about to begin his first NFL season, so is it possible the number one pick could throw more interceptions than TDs this season? We're playing the odds after the break. Well, two sources told Benjamin Albright of 94.1 FM in Denver that the Broncos tried to trade Peyton Manning to the Texans sometime before the Denver quarterback signed his restructured deal with the team on March 4th. This report was quickly denied on Twitter by a Broncos team spokesman saying the speculation is false and the report is inaccurate. Michael, are you buying the denial? Completely? No. <laughs> Only because it's a little bit ironic that as soon as this call may, have, may or may not have been made, Peyton's deal was restructured and there was a no trade clause mm -hmm. put into there. Now it's the Texans. They don't have a quarterback, so they're probably going to call anybody. Sure. You know, now the Broncos could have just not even taken a call because if you think about it, the Texans are calling and, hey, Denver, we want to ask you a little bit about Peyton Manning and we were wondering if you, hello, hello. Hello? I don't, did we lose the connection? I don't, they don't, they're not calling. So in that sense, Denver just probably didn't even think about the idea. They, no, absolutely not. But could it have happened and there's been some talks? I would say there, there's a little smoke there. Maybe not fire, but a little bit of smoke. I, I agree with Michael. I, I think that um, teams have discussions in general. 
right? We're seeing it right now play out in the NBA with Dwayne Wade, right? He's been a guy who's been a star there forever, and, and there's been some stuff that's been leaked about contracts and him not being happy and them not being happy with where they want him to come in at. Uh, so this doesn't surprise me at all. Teams have these discussions, and there was a time when Gary Kubiak was named the coach that people were wondering, hmm, is Payne going to be the right fit? He likes to run the naked boot a lot, and you know that means Payne's going to have to get out of the pocket and run out of his comfort zone. So there were a lot of questions, certainly, about that. There were questions as to whether John Elway wanted to move on from Peyton Manning. So all that stuff, people forget that was just a few months ago. So, of course, I, I buy the story that they at least discussed it. And what are they going to do? What, are they not going to deny it? They're supposed to deny it in that situation because I'm guaranteeing that Peyton wasn't a part of that particular process. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I think you don't discuss Peyton Manning at all. That's my take on it. I don't. I believe the Denver Broncos. I mean, this is Peyton Manning. You, you off the top, you say, listen, we can't talk about him. I'll give you anything else you want, but not Peyton Manning. Why would they have that discussion? I don't understand. Denver is in a lose lose situation there. Why would you give up Peyton Manning? Because you have to listen to everything that people are going to but if you offer. Already Even know, when it comes to Peyton Manning, hey, what are you throwing on the table? Yeah. What, what does hey, it hurt just, to listen? What's it, hey, exactly. Just because I go to a steak restaurant doesn't mean I'm going to get steak. I might <laughs> I might have chicken, but show, show me the prime. What does the prime rib look like? Right. Let me see what the ribeye is. Uh, show me a little. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but I'm, thank you for showing me. Maybe you the, go surfing. Now, the next that. time, now the next time is, you know what, I'm going to have some chicken. Look at that ribeye. You, you know what? Yeah, I will take the ribeye. Why not? That's okay. And it's I, I okay think, to do I that. Think teams but you discuss gotta listen. that internally. I do think teams discuss right. all that stuff. Internally. And that's why they have to think. deny it because Peyton wasn't involved. That's the, that's why they have to deny it. But you would never want that to get back to Peyton Manning. That's my whole thing. Too and, late. And Houston has no reason to, to hide that. So now it gets back to your quarterback. And, and what does that do? So I don't even think you talk about it. You take them off the table right away, which I believe they did. I, I, I don't believe in it at all. And why now? Well, why Peyton understands that. Well, because look at his age. Niche. Look at his age yeah, and look yeah. at his arm strength. That's exactly to deteriorate. Right. He's up in age. He had the problems with the quad that affected his already uh, arm strength that's not great at this stage of his career. So you look at a guy and you think, okay, is his body deteriorating? What can we get for him? I think those are internal discussions that any team would have with an aging superstar like him, even though he's still performing at a pretty high level. Well, and if I'm Peyton Manning and, and I don't hear anyone talking about anything, after everything they said was wrong with me before, that makes me more nervous. Uh -huh. Now, how come nobody talking about trading me? What's the deal? What's going on? Like, that means that something's going on behind my back. Sure. Well, to your point, George, he's 39 now. How much does Peyton really have left in the tank? Maybe another year or two. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're looking at. So if, if you're the Broncos, you're weighing, you know, you're weighing it out, seeing, okay, what could we get for him? Is it worth it potentially to, to move him? What would the, you know, the backlash be? All that stuff is factored in. Again, those are discussions that are had internally that usually don't include the player, especially in that sport. Football is the most cutthroat of all the sports. <laughs> yeah. Which is why he had the no trade clause put in <laughs> right. when he After did his restructured yes. deal. And I agree yeah. with you another year or so, but uh, God, it's hard for me to bet against Peyton Manning because I, well, I hear just you. when you think he's ran out of gas, he comes up with a punch. Yep, proves so you wrong. It's, it's, it's hard for me. Well, meanwhile, Rob Gronkowski says he hasn't spent a cent of his contract with the Patriots. We'll talk Gronk as part of our NFL Quick Takes when we come back. Yeah.